Hey folks, welcome once again to the Morse July 2023 Adventures Day 6, July the 6th. Um, a busy day, bittersweet day. The family's uh, headed south and headed west. Um, and we had a chance. <laughs> folks, I don't know why. I don't know how. <laughs> Alright, we had a chance to meet up with this morning. We got fuel. We text and see if they were still there at Bucky's. Okay. And uh, somebody had their phone turned off and the ringer turned off so they didn't get the text. So we went to, after we filled up uh, the RV, you know, we went ahead and got on the road because there wasn't any answer. We figured they were driving. And we get, I don't know, three, four hundred yards down the parking lot down the road. And we get a text. Yeah. We're here in the in the jerky section. Well, at that point, with an RV and towing uh, the Jeep, there wasn't anywhere to turn around. So we said, well, we'll see you later. Drive safe. And we went on. Uh, most of the trip today was really good. Now, folks, we are, tonight, we are in, in at the uh, Whispering Hills RV Park in Georgetown, Kentucky. We left Pigeon Ford, Tennessee this morning. Uh, I think it was around 10.30 when we left the parking lot from Bucky's. All right, and we got here at 5 o'clock. Oh, now, at least two hours of that, at least two, maybe two and a half, was spent at the Museum of the Appalachians. And folks, I, I don't remember exactly where it is. It's, it's in Tennessee. All right. Um north of, of Knoxville but it is worth the stop I say we were there for over two and a half hours or about two and a half hours we saw less than a third of the exhibits there's that much stuff and it's it's awesome uh, is it going to be a return trip no not for the purpose of going back to the museum. But if we're in the area, yeah, we're going to stop again. That's for sure. I say we got, we did less than a third of the, uh, of, of the exhibits. All right. One of the most impressive, well, you know, aside from the country uh, icons, the early country icons of, of country music, like Chet Atkins and uh, Roy Akins and some others. Uh, they had some of their instruments on display and everything in the history. Of course, Sergeant York, you know, from World War I uh, uh, Army uh, history are from this area. But what I didn't know, uh, and it was it impressed to me, now, I don't know if y'all ever heard of Possum Trot, Prot, Possum Trot, Tennessee. However, a young man grew up there. Then his family moved to, moved west. And he wrote two very famous novels. Uh was in the gold rush in California days and even wrote articles for newspapers about uh, the frogs and the jumping and whatnot. They give you a clue. Okay. Mark Twain, Sam McQuimmons, his family lived in Possum Trot, Tennessee. All right. He was a neighbor of Sergeant York. All right. From you know, like I told you, you know, uh, World War One, uh, Army uh, history. So, I've got on my page four um, postings because you can only do 80, 80 uh, uh, pictures at a time. So I've got four postings <laughs> of the pictures I took uh, today. The majority being at the museum. Now, Chrissy. Uh, you know, took some pictures of the mountainside, uh, you know, some old barns and the farms and stuff. We just love that. And 
and I was I was glad that there was breaks in the trees along the interstate that we could actually see some countryside rather than just trees. Oh, excuse me. Now another part of the reason that we were were late getting here because only it was only supposed to have been a four hour trip was that for over an hour we were in stop and go traffic maybe at the most 15 mile an hour to a construction zone the right lane was closed folks there wasn't a piece of construction equipment nowhere they just had the right lane closed and for over an hour it was bumper to bumper anywhere from 7 to 15 miles an hour or stopped all right folks this is a three lane interstate highway going down two lanes and you're doing 15 mile an hour totally ridiculous i ain't in charge okay so <laughs> the two and a half hours at the park or at the museum the hour or so in the traffic there we got here it, it's folks i i recommend whispering hills this is our third time here and uh, whenever we come through here and, and you know when you know you've got a good deal you try to you know excuse me stick with it so like today we got here at five o'clock I should have been here about two. All right, actually about one thirty. Um, but I could have driven on to, you know, up the road, even into the Cincinnati. But this was almost halfway of where we're going from Pigeon Ford to where we're going in Ohio, Big Prairie, Ohio. This was just about halfway, so this is why we stopped here. Uh, because I knew the accommodations were good. Uh, we're parked right, right close to the pool. So me and Chrissy, you know, went and soaked in the pool for a while and the nice water and just kind of relaxed. But the stress of the trip, oh, excuse me. The stress of the trip, <laughs> the trap of the trip, you know, just kind of melt away. And then of course, Took showers, got all the chlorine out of our hair and off our bodies, and then had supper. So, you know, it was a, a actually it was a relaxing day, even though there was parts of it that was, like I say, you know, over an hour in traffic, backed up traffic. But, you know, the park, the, the museum, it was it was awesome, you know. And, and we had been by here. I mean, this like I say, this is our third time, so we've we've been on I seventy five before, and we keep saying, well, you know, we'll go there sometime. We'll go some. I asked her, she goes, well, if you want to. I said, well, hey, we're on vacation. We don't have to be in Ohio until tomorrow. Actually, the next, well, tomorrow, but our reservation start. But we don't have to be there until Sunday, actually. So, you know, it's it's good to go. You know, we can, we can, we can stop. Well, excuse me. Sorry, folks. And I'm glad we did. I really am. I highly recommend it. Uh, I say the, the Museum of the Appalachians. And it's not just Tennessee. They've got uh, cabins and, and you know, uh, stuff from Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, uh, Georgia, Carolina. You know, all the states that had that has Appalachian Mountains in it here in the south, they've got got stuff from them. Uh, and they've got, uh, it's, I won't say it's a working farm, but they do have farm animals. We saw the goats, the sheep, the uh, the peacocks, the chickens, you know. What else do we see? Donkey, the Donks, horse. donkeys, and horses, you know, um, that would have been used in the Appalachian, you know. Um, so it's it's well worth it. And the RV park, Whispering Hills RV park uh, here in Georgetown, uh, Kentucky, highly recommended. Uh, the first time we were here, we met uh, one of our sons and his family from Pennsylvania on father's day four years ago and then on father's day sunday and then on monday we went to uh went to the ark which is about a half hour from here so uh and there's others uh, another rv park that we stayed at years ago that we'll never go back and when you start before you even get there you start hearing the banjos okay enough said on that but hey the good thing is 
we're here in Whispering Hills. All right, it's a good park. Good park. Uh, nice uh, laundry facilities. Nice uh, bath house. Everything right next to the pool, and the 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 sites are for the most part level. Uh, they do have some back ends, but they have a lot of pull throughs also. And uh, we didn't we didn't even hook unhook today. You know, we our site we we're 31 foot, and then we got the jeep towed, and we still fit. You know, so it's not a problem. But folks, it's already 10 minutes into this video, and and you know, I don't know how I talk and talk and talk, and it's already 10 minutes, and so didn't do anything today. Okay, so let's get to the good stuff. All right, Matthew 7, um, verse 8. And actually, I'm, you know, that's 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 it for today, Matthew seven verse eight. For anyone who seeks, who asks, receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. Now, folks, this is, you know, chapter six, chapter seven. It 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 you know, it's nonstop Christ talking. Okay, there's very few. If 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 you have a red letter Bible. Six and seven are pretty much all red. All right. Actually, even more than that. But, you know, so he's on a roll, if you will. All right. And, you know, he's he's tell, he's, he's he's talking about being a hypocrite, you know, about, you know, getting the speck on your brother's eye. But, you know, you've got the plank in yours. In other words, you can't, you know, take care of your own business before you start taking care of somebody else's. All right. And it goes on, you know, and, and that's what it says, uh, you know, let me you know. Or how can you say to your brother? Let me remove the speck from your eye and look, and a plank is in your own eye. You hypocrite. First remove your the plank from your eyes, and then you'll be able to see clearly, you know, the speck in your brother's eye. All right, and it goes on, you know, about, you know, uh, that, that, you know, do not give what is holy to the dogs or cast your pearls to the slime, because they'll just trample the feet, and then they'll turn on you. And then in chapter, or verse 6, he says, Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find knock and it will be open to you and then today's verse all right for everyone who asks receives he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be open and you say well you know jerry i've been praying about this i've been praying about that and I don't got it, and it didn't happen to me, and, and, and you go on with all these negativisms. Remember, okay, that God knows the desires of your heart. Okay? He knows the desires, even before you ask for it. But you have to be working in the will of God. Alright? That's a key point. You've got to be in the will of God. Because if you are working in the will of God, if you are working for God, if you are being Christ-like in your words, actions, and deeds, and being a light into the world of darkness, God is going to reward you with the desires of your heart before you even ask it. Does that make sense to you? Okay. For he who asks receives. In God's time, in God's will. He who seeks finds, and he who knocks, it will be opened. And to him that knocks, it will be open. All right? God is saying, Serve me, worship me, and I will give you your desires. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you're going to find it knock and the door will be open to you you know i've got people that that and I, folks I, i'm sorry if i get excited no i'm not sorry i'm happy all right but i have folks that that are you know friends that that say you know i didn't expect this to happen to me talking about in the positive all right you know uh there were there were three of us or there were four of us up for this position and I thought the others were more qualified. But for some reason I got the job. And I turned to the individual and I says, Why did you doubt God? What are you talking about? I says, You're a faithful servant. 
you pray with people, you pray for people, you read your Bible, you you know, you 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 work hard in the church as as being a servant, you know, not 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 being a pastor or something like that, but just being right to people and 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 helping whenever you can. And finding favor in God's eyes. And He likes to bless His children. So you were seeking, you were knocking at that door. You were looking for that position, that promotion. And you said that you had other people that were more qualified in your eyes than what you were. But God says, not in my eyes. I know you want that position. I know you're seeking that position. And you're applying for the job, i.e. you're knocking on the door. You've got it, son. Thank you for your work. See, you got favor. Many times people don't understand, well, well, you know, what happened here and what happened there? It's called grace and favor. Simple as that. If you will serve God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, it's one of the other scriptures we had last year in my, my little devotion videos here, okay? He is going to reward you. And this is why it's, it's so good. For everyone who seeks, receives, or asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. That's not a maybe. That's a promise. If you can understand that, that's a promise. You serve God with all your heart, soul, and mind to the best of your ability to be a Christian, which is to be Christ-like. And we all fail. God knows that. Okay? That's why we're covered with Christ's blood. All right? He's going to reward us because he wants to have his children happy. And we are, as believers, one of... Of, of God's children. We have been grafted into God's family through the blood of Christ that was shed on the cross for our sins. Now, folks, I hear, I could go on, but it's already uh, 17 and a half minutes on this video. <coughs> and uh, sometimes, well, actually, i got to post it separately because it's so long it won't, won't post with my pictures anymore because I'm so long-winded. But, folks, that's today's scripture. Matthew 7, 8. All right. Remember. As long as we're in the will of God and we're working the best we can to serve God, this is his promise to us. And folks, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that you can go to the Father and say, Hey, Dad, I want this. Hey, Dad, can I come in? You know, Christ, actually, God opened the door when Christ said it was finished on the cross. Because before that time, and I, I, I know I said I was going to quit, and I, and I will. Before that time, the only ones who could go into the presence of God was the chief priest all right, in Jerusalem. He's the only one that could go into the temple and go into the Holy of Holies. But when Christ said it was finished, that curtain that separated man from the presence of God which was over a foot thick was ripped from the top to the bottom and the Holy of Holies was exposed. We can now go boldly into the presence of God and we don't have to have a priest go in there with bells on his feet and rope around his ankle in case he wasn't in case he hadn't purified himself like he was supposed to and, and, was, and walked into, the, in, into God's presence with sin on his heart. But then they had to drag him out because they couldn't go in and get him. But now, because of what Christ did on the cross, we can boldly go right in and say, Hey, Dad. So, you know, when we're knocking on the door, say, Hey, Dad. That door is already open for us. All right? And if you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, and you don't have a relationship that you can go and say, Hey, Dad, please repeat after me. And, and say it with sincerity. Don't just mouth the words and play a game. All right, say, dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus Christ's name. Forgive me for my sins. I repent of all that I have done that has been 
unworthy and unholy to you. But forgive me and cleanse me with Christ's blood that was shed on the cross for me. Forgive me for my sins and help me. Send the Holy Spirit, O Lord, to me to guide me and to show me as I read my Bible every day and as I pray every day. Let the Holy Spirit comfort me and guide me and help me along in my walk to be more Christ-like and to be worthy of the gift that you sent for us, your only Son. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And Lord, I thank you for that gift. Forgive me my sins. Help me and guide me, O Lord. I pray in your name. Amen. Now, folks, if you have said that prayer and you really, really mean it, then find a friend. And if you don't have any friends that are Christians, call a local church and say, I just gave my heart to Christ. When is your service? You know, when do you have a men's group or a women's group or a youth group? Get plugged in the church. Okay? Read your Bible every day. Pray every day and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, protect you. All right. Folks, God's will, we will come to you from someplace up north. Okay? Good night and God bless.